Hi students! In this video tutorial, I wanted to show you first of all that yes, I am a real person. On the other side of your screen, there is a human being here. It is me. I do exist. Um, anyway, on this particular video, what I really want to talk about is not my existence. I want to talk about your service learning project. The service learning project I introduced in week two, and it's not due until the second to last week of class, actually right before finals week. And it's such an amazing project, okay? So so I know some of you see it and your eyes are probably widening and you're getting a little nervous about what are we supposed to do? What is this huge project? It's really cool, guys, and it's going to help you in so many ways. So first things first, I want to show you, of course, in Blackboard, you have all sorts of documents. Uh, but one of the documents that you should be looking at as I'm talking is the one that has kind of the tree on it, right? And it's actually the guidelines for what I'm talking about. So what are you required to do? During the course of this semester, you are required to do five. Now, if you want to do more than five, oh, you're making me so happy, but five hours of required either volunteerism, community service, uh, service learning, which are all basically very similar things, or you can do some kind of academic extracurricular activity tied to your major or your area of interest. So right there, I'm telling you a little something important. I would prefer, I highly, highly recommend that you select some kind of a service learning project that has something to do with the major that you're going into or your areas of interest. I know some of you don't exactly have decided on your major and that's fine, but you probably have categories that you're interested in. So I'm going to push you and encourage you to do your service learning, volunteerism, uh, events, and so forth on something tied to your major or your area of interest. However, that said, you don't have to do it on your, uh, your major or your area of interest. It's really wide open. I just want you to be doing something um, volunteerism or service learning related. Now, again, reminder, you're required to do a minimum of five hours. If you do more, great. Um, now, why are you doing this? Like, why am I requiring this in your learning frameworks class? And the answer is for your benefit, okay? I know it seems like, oh my gosh, I already have, you know, school and work and studying and I have a job and I take care of my family and I, I, I need a little time for me. And now, Dr. Bean, you're giving me this huge project slow down, okay? This is actually going to benefit you in so many ways, okay? It's actually going to help you in your other assignments for this class, but most importantly, when you do this kind of a project, it's helping giving you knowledge and skills that are going to be helpful in your career, um, in your jobs, in your future employment, especially if it's tied to your major. It's also going to help you in networking with people who are going to be valuable and important to you for, again, either getting a job or being in a job or, or networking and getting through the right pathways for what where you want to head. Another thing, of course, is that it's going to be valuable to you for your resume, okay? A lot of students, when uh, they first make a resume straight into college, unless they're a little bit older, um, more experienced, um, if they're kind of straight out of high school and they're just going into academics, um, the resume section kind of on the extracurricular activities and the volunteerism, it's not so extensive. So uh, while your degree is hugely important, once you graduate, you're going to be competing with everybody who already has a degree. So you need to differentiate yourself. You need to set yourself apart from everybody else. And one of the ways you do that is you uh, do volunteerism or service learning or internships. There are a bunch of things that you can do, OK? And so you're going to need to fill up that horrible white space on the, on the resume. OK, and then another thing is, of course, it's the idea of giving back to your community um, that has helped support and, and, and help you through maybe public school and now at STC if you're on financially. It's giving back to the community and the people people and uh, that have supported you. So that's also very important. Now, for students who have a declared major, all of this is making sense so far, but if you're an undecided major, you might be like, eh, how is, you know, how is it benefiting me? Well, it's benefiting you in very similar ways, but it has a, actually another benefit, and that is it might help you decide between different majors or within a major, like to narrow it down a little bit, because you might be experiencing different kinds of volunteerism, which would be awesome. Okay, so that's the project. Now, I want to talk one more level, and this is something we're going to talk about in the class. There's something called Maslow 
Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it's this triangle that says, you know, uh, it's about motivation. And it, there are different steps. There's like in one model, it's five steps. In another model, it's eight steps. But the bottom line is that in order, you know, what motivates us, what motivates our, our behavior. And at the lower levels, it's like basic survival stuff and safety and feeling part of a community and so forth. But as you get closer to the top of the pyramid in either model, one of the tops of the pyramids is about self-actualization. And self-actualization basically means that you're fulfilling kind of uh, becoming your best version of yourself. You're fulfilling your life's purpose and mission and passion and all this comes together. And so this kind of a project actually helps you get to that high level of self-actualization. On the other, you know, more extensive part of Maslow's um, hierarchy that's an eight-step model, there's something called like you, tr you transcendentalism. You've probably heard of trans you transcend to something, a transcendental uh, phase. And what that basically means is that um, you're doing, you're part of something that's larger than yourself, okay? And that's like the biggest picture of anything, and that's where like altruism comes in, like doing something for somebody else, like giving back to your community. So I have ulterior motives in why you're doing this particular project, right? I want you to become the best version of yourself and the best version of yourself to impact your community and your world, okay? So big, big reasons why I'm having you do this. Now, um, to talk about the specific project a little bit more, you have many, many documents, okay? So what you're going to be submitting, remember you have all semester to do this and at any point you can ask me questions, five hours is, come on guys, no biggie. So one of the documents that you have in Blackboard, I'm trying to separate out the papers, is the actual documentation of hours, okay? So this is a matrix, I recommend that you print it off and every time you're getting ready to go and volunteer, take this with you and you actually have to fill out specific information, you know? And I've also delineated on the second page what I expect in each of those areas, which is basically, you know, the name of the organization that you're serving, the date that you did it, a contact person. Now, very important, you have to get the person that's kind of supervising you while you're there. So you have to get their signature. That's very important. And you also have to have a phone number of that contact or the organization because your professor does reserve the right to call any of these people to verify your attendance. Okay. We do this in the education classes too for students who are going to do field observation hours in the schools. Now, most students are absolutely wonderful and they follow the guidelines and they really follow through with this, but we do have some students who like breaking the rules and they just make up that they did something, they sign it themselves and they turn it into the instructor. Not ethical on any level, okay guys? So make sure, we're a professional now, you're doing things to make yourself better. You don't even go that route because, of course, if you do that, you fail the class instantaneously. Um, and then you'll, of course, have to retake it and pay all this money and all. Ugh, don't even go that route. Do this because it's going to help you. So you got to do the documentation of hours. At the end, you also are going to be doing a reflection report. So it, it has the tree on it again. And this is delineating specifically that you have to write an essay and you have to do kind of two things. You have to, in the first paragraph, you have to tell what you actually did. You have to describe the event. And in this case, you only have to pick one of the hours. Like let's say you do the hours in five different places five different hours, pick one of them. Or you could pick two of them and compare and contrast. I'm really flexible about how you go about it. And in the second paragraph, you're going to be describing your reaction, your thoughts, your feelings, your uh, knowledge and skills that you gained and so forth. So the directions are all there. You can read those. Another document that I've provided for you is an actual list of the volunteer agencies. These are just some, it's not all of them, that are available in the Oh my goodness, that was my kitty cat, I'm so sorry. Um, one of my three kitty cats who's very interested in service learning, especially at the Palm Valley Animal Center, which you can volunteer there. So this is the uh, list of the volunteer organizations, and I know that the Palm Valley Animal Center is on this list as I look through, but ba 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 there it is. And um, there are more organizations that you can contribute to, but I've given you a helpful, handy list of ones that we work very closely with at STC. And the last thing is a list of the clubs and organizations at STC. Okay, so in addition to doing service learning and community learning and everything, you also have an opportunity to participate in STC events, and it doesn't have, even have to be just an STC event, but something academic um, that relates to your major. For, so for example, at STC we have a sex trafficking conference, and of course any students are welcome to go, but if you're in sociology, psychology, criminal justice, right, it makes sense that you would want to go to a conference like that because of course you're gaining very um, huge levels of knowledge and skills and networking and all sorts of things. So I also count that. It can be attending an event that is going to contribute in some way to your growth and development, okay? Now, 
everything said, I want to tell you guys, I am not just throwing this project at you for something to do. Okay. I firmly believe in this as for me, for my own personal and professional benefits. Um, I do this. I've done this since I was a high school student and I can, I'm now, oh my gosh, 43 years old. And I still volunteer, um, actively volunteer. Um, I'm a big in environmentalism. Um, so I'm part of the Sierra club. I'm part of, um, some organizations actually back in my home state where I own, I still own land and I take care of um, the trees and stuff like that. Um, I'm also part of Keep McAllen Beautiful um, down here in the valley, big time on animal welfare and being an animal rights activist. So I work very closely with the Palm Valley Animal Center, Paws Center. I have rescued, I think about 300 cats and spayed and neutered them and gotten them placed in homes. Um, I also do work for um, the Red Nose Project for Habitat for Humanity, uh, for Project S. Taka um, and Harris Anitas. Oh my gosh, there's so many things that we can contribute to and it's so beneficial. So I'm telling you sincerely from my heart that this is something that is gonna benefit you, especially um, the first time you do it, you might be a little nervous, but then you're good to go. So if you have any questions or comments about the service learning project, please don't hesitate to ask me. Remember you have all semester to do it basically from the second week of classes all the way to the week before finals. Don't wait to the last minute to do all the five hours and process all this information. Um, uh, start working on it slowly but surely, but I'm here if you need anything. And also keep in mind that your departments and your divisions and the college as a whole, we're all resources for you. So if you're in the criminal justice department and you don't know what you can do to get more involved, go talk to the chair of the department, go talk to the secretary, go talk to the faculty, mentors, go talk to your advisors, counselors. We all have tons of information available to help you be the very best student that you can possibly be. Um, and, uh, but you have to have the initiative. That's the bottom line. It is up to you to go and seek out these resources and then become the very best version of you on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Thank you for listening and it's good to see you.